Hello and welcome to today's episode. Today what we're going to do is we're going to do another Facebook group post observation that has been made. This thing was posted probably, I don't know, 18 hours now since it was put up. And in this post, I will do my best to try to explain to people what's possibly occur occurring and what the person is doing is they're basically blaming people for abandoning those with chronic illness so let me get on here and pull this up um, there we are I I've cut and pasted this post from this Facebook group po this, this Facebook group here um, it's an anonymous member so we don't have any names I'm going to title this one why people justly abandon us well let's go over the post real quick and just we'll talk about it and I'll explain some things okay has anyone noticed how chronically ill people are near nearly always blamed when their friends family members end up abandoning them I've noticed this with myself and with others in chronic illness communities. Whenever a chronically ill person says that their illness led to their friends and community ditching them, the chronically ill person is primarily suspected for being at fault. It was your attitude. You weren't trying hard enough. You weren't accommodating enough to their busy life schedule. You couldn't keep up with or do the things they wanted to do. You kept saying you weren't able or feeling up to it. So naturally they gave up trying. You were unreliable. You made too many excuses, took too many rain checks, had to cancel plans too many times. Your pain affected your mood so you weren't lighthearted enough to be around. Blame, blame, blame. While these may seem like reasonable reasons for a healthy person to give up on someone, I would challenge the healthy person blaming us for being abandoned and ditched by our communities to try to live a single day in our shoes. If it's hard for you to have to accommodate us, imagine how hard it must be for us to always require accommodations which most people aren't willing to offer or provide. If it's hard for you to be around us when we aren't happy-go-lucky because we are in agony, imagine how hard it must be for us to be in agony. If it's hard for you to sacrifice one day spending time with us, not doing the things you love the most, things which we also used to love like hiking, biking, riding, swimming, and so on, Imagine how hard it is for us to never be able to do those things again either. People are quick to blame us because they don't want to acknowledge the reality, which is that most people are generally pr 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 pretty, sh pretty shallow, petty shallow or whatever it is, impatient and self-serving. Most people hate conf confronting and being reminded of the realities of life like sickness, suffering, pain, and death. They hate being around anyone who reminds them of those harsh realities. They hate being inconvenienced even slightly. They hate it when they can no longer use you or your energy and friendship, where they look, where they took much more than they gave. Most people are fair-weathered friends. They're out to have a good time when the sun's out. But when the moment things get rough or you need them, they're gone. And then instead of having the maturity and honesty to admit they are selfish and weak, they blame the easy scapegoat, the chronically ill, disabled person. The fact that this same story repeats itself over and over again in chronically ill people all over the, all over the globe makes me realize it's just not me. There's nothing inherently wrong with my character, personality, or failings as a friend human being. The fact is that most healthy, able-bodied people just don't want to understand. 
They don't want to put in the effort to be compassionate, understanding, and accommodating us because we remind them of something that scares them and they aren't brave enough to handle it. Of course, there are always the exception to this rule. Hold them near and dear because those ones are real. But I have found more often than not, this is just how people are. Okay. Let me go back to where I can see myself. You know, I've done previous videos on talking about the very real risk people with chronic illnesses face by being abandoned. And I, I've talked at length about why people leave us. One of the things that, you know, if you, if you, if you followed along with that, and I'll put a link on underneath the YouTube for you to click on it. The one thing that's consistent in what that person is saying, everything they're saying the other person's doing is in all likelihood the same thing that they themselves are doing in their situation. What I always encourage people to understand is one of the greatest frustrations people who get sick and tired of chronically ill people have, people that abandon loved ones, it's because the chronically ill person was unwilling to do those things for themselves that they were actually capable of doing. But it became easier to have other people do it for them. You know, having disabilities, being disabled, whether you're physically, mentally, whatever, how we approach it can be a real turnoff to a lot of people. It can be a tremendous grind that people struggle with. You know, a healthy person who loves you, at some point, you know, they may love you or whatever, but you're just not willing to do anything for yourself that you're still capable of doing. And it's just easier to ring a bell. It's easier to complain. It's easier to whine. It's easier to bitch. It's easier to moan. You know, you insist on people surrounding you that enable you. And realistic people just say, you know what, I'm out of here. I mean, this is ridiculous. I know so many people. I, I mean, we got, I got family like this. Yeah, they are by definition disabled. But they won't do anything for themselves they don't have to. I mean, if, if they need something done, they expect the world to do it for them even though it's fully something they are fully capable of doing. You know, but ironically, and this is what also loved ones, caregivers, you know, boyfriends, girlfriends start, they see that maybe the, the person with the chronic illness doesn't see. They can't do anything for themselves but when it comes to getting their nails done, oh, they can always find the time to get that finished, get that figured out. You know, they can't figure out how to do anything for themselves, but certain things they can always figure out. I'm always so fatigued, but I can go to the hairdresser. I'm so fatigued, but I can get my nails done. I'm so fatigued, but I can go to the vape shop. I'm so fatigued, but I can get a hold of my pot dealer. I'm so fatigued, I can't do anything for myself. But when it comes time to get my medication refilled for pain meds, I can figure out how to make that happen. And this repeats itself. So when it comes time to for somebody who cares about you, and you know you you can do all those things without any hesitation. 
but you can't get your own drink. You know, you need somebody to dump your urinal for you. I mean, they see you capable of doing more than you're willing to do for yourself. And it does. It becomes so friggin' frustrating to those people who are trying to help you. I know a lady, and I may have mentioned this before, her whole life is about wine and pain pills. I mean, everything. And she's disabled. Now, she's disabled because, frankly, she made bad life choices. But she has her nails done. She gets her hair done. You know, she, she does all this stuff but she can't do anything for herself when it's not time for her to get her hair or nails done. You know, she goes through a, what do they call those court-sized bottles of wine every day? I, I don't drink alcohol, I don't know. They're the larger bottle of wine, okay? And she's constantly just popping these pills and drinking the wine and you talk to her on the phone, and she's just slurring her words. And it's like, she's living off the system. She's living off other people. She's surrounding herself with people that will only agree with her perception of how unfair life is. And when people like myself try to say something... She doesn't want to hear anything we have to say, and yet I'm a pretty good example of overcoming the challenges that a lot of us face. But because I don't approach it from a drunk, strung out, mental health excuse mindset, people like that don't want to hear it. They sure as hell don't want to see it. So when you see what this person wrote, and you see how they say they've been abandoned, it's ironic, the very thing that this person is saying other people are doing to them is exactly the same thing that in most likely they're doing to themselves. There's something else in this post that's very important, and I want to talk about that. And I'll do a whole nother video on this as well. One of the things, and I've showed this post and others like it, to people with neurological issues such as Parkinson's, ALS, MS. You know, our condition is a brain injury. So we share many of the same challenges that Parkinson's, ALS, MS experiences. And one of the things that's very common is a person with these conditions really struggles to get thought to paper. You know, when we're writing or we're trying to write something, it's not a well-written piece of artwork. I mean, it's it's pretty choppy. It, it's not smooth in many cases. And if you look at how she wrote this or he wrote this document, the one thing you'll notice, it's very smooth. It's not choppy. It's, it's one of those things that a person with an actual brain injury or neurological injury um, experiences is not really capable of doing very well. Now, a person with a psychological issue who is experiencing brain fog and, you know, fatigue and stuff, they actually don't struggle this same way. And they have a tendency to be able to put words to paper much easier than somebody who has a true neurological disorder. And now granted, there are people like Whitney and Jamison who are beautiful writers. And Whitney, I, I, I agree, most likely has some pretty serious neurological issues. I believe Jamison is, is much more, there's, 
it's probably much more psychological because of the car accident that he caused. Um, but people with psychological issues that are the primary factor in their condition or their presentation, they seem to be able to word things pretty well. And like I said, I've shared this with other people who have serious neurological issues like we do, and they all say the same thing. It's like, and they pick up on it right away. They're like, how exactly is somebody with this type of challenge able to write this way? And, you know, it just doesn't work that way in most cases. It is a red flag that the person who wrote this is somebody who has, and they've already mentioned, they, they struggle with pain, they struggle with, you know, this, they struggle with that. And most people who are proclaiming to have ME-CFS or its sister condition, neuro, neurotoxic encephalopathy, in most cases, those people are not suffering from a true neurological disorder, but rather a psychological disorder, as the doctors su suspect that's presenting in us in a physical-like manifestation. I know somebody with cartilage damage in their knee, and they, you know, they're living like they got ME-CFS. I mean... They've just convinced themselves that the world's coming to an end and, you know, they're fatigued and they're this and they're that. And it's like, you, you got a torn meniscus. I mean, <laughs> and the more they talk about it, the more they convince themselves that it's it's life ending. It's <laughs> and it's like <sighs> people that are so dependent on these medications you know, people that are dependent on Adderalls and pain meds and antipsychotics and anti this and anti that and they vape and they swig power juice drinks or whatever they're called and those energy drinks and, you know, they contact their pot dealer left and right. It's strange how those people are the ones people want nothing to do with. You know, I know a lot of people who have chronic, very serious chronic conditions, but the one thing they do is they always put others first before themselves. And as a result, there seems to be a sense of grace, a sense of respect for the other person. I don't see in this post a lot of respect for other people. I see a poor me pity party going on of somebody who most likely has just ground down all relationships because their unwillingness to participate in doing those things for themselves that they can do for themselves. And we see this with the wheelchair mindset people. You know, they got this fatigue and all of a sudden they self-subscribe themselves a wheelchair. And then they go on national television sitting Indian style because they got pots and they got this and they got that. And, you know, everything just turns into a miser self-misery declaration. And so I'm not going to sit here and say that this person doesn't have a condition because obviously I can't go backwards because it's an anonymous post, I can't see what they've written before. But a lot of times when you see a post and somebody has written it and put their name with it, you can actually click on the name. One, we're talking about Facebook groups and read what they've said. In most cases, you can see the doctors don't believe them. They're on pain meds. They are depressed, anti, you know, they have depression, anxiety, you know, they're seeking low-dose LND, they're pot smokers, they're vapes, they're... And when you, like I said, when you read what this person has written, those are the exact things that, in many cases, people with chronic conditions are, in fact, themselves guilty of doing. Be very careful with these medications, um, because they can trap you. 
Till next time, I appreciate your time, and we'll see you on the next one. If you have any questions, just send me an email or text me or whatever you want. I never block people. I believe that we need to have an honest communication. I believe the biggest problem with the credibility of MECFS is the MECFS community itself and how we approach the challenges that we face. Till next time, be safe, be smart, do your own homework. Do not believe what some idiot on the internet is telling you. This guy. I could be a complete moron. And there's a lot of days that I am. Till next time, thanks.